Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of SageMaker Fridays. My name is Julian, and I'm a principal developer advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. As usual, please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. My name is Ségolène, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML project on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. All right. Thanks again for being with us. So where are we in this season? So uh, this is the first episode mm -hmm. of the um, automation sequence. And so today we're going to discuss, start discussing um, ML operations, you know, deploying endpoints, um, monitoring models, building pipelines, etc. Okay. So we have four episodes. Automation. Automation in general. Super, super important topic. Okay. Uh, and we have four episodes and then we'll dive into AutoML for uh, the end of this season. So still quite a lot of ground to cover. So um, again, we are talking about the music recommendation example, which we covered uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So Sego, tell us a little bit about that. So, Just in case some of you didn't watch that episode, right? Oh, yeah. First episode, season four, <laughs> exactly. go and watch it, okay? We're revisiting the example and zooming in on different things. So tell us about it. So yes, exactly, Julian. Uh, this week, we are going to work on, uh, again, a music recommendation problem. So during the first episode, we focused on the data science and right. machine learning part, so mm -hmm. machine learning angle, and uh, we covered uh, uh, data preparation, mm -hmm. training, explainability, so really okay. data science. Yes. And this week, we are going to revisit this example, focusing on the ops okay. angle. Good. Discussing this time uh, deployment, uh, monitoring, and much more. OK, so we're <laughs> picking up where we left last. the example last mm -hmm. time. And I think we stopped at uh, training and, and uh, model debugging and explainability. explainability. Okay, so we're, uh, we're, we'll uh, summarize those steps. So if you watch the episode, this is where we are. Uh, we're starting to, uh, to deploy. Mm -hmm. If you didn't watch it, don't worry, we're going to summarize, okay? Um, if you want to uh, run this example, it's available on GitHub, of course. And this is the repository, okay? So take a screenshot, I'll give you a few seconds. Uh, and we'll try not to forget to show it again at the end. <laughs> at the end. Of okay. The time. All right. So let's start looking at this example. All right. Give me a second here. Okay. Here it is. Right. So here's the, um, you may remember this is organized in a series of notebooks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so last time we ran notebook one, two A, two B, two C, and three. Okay, so data prep training, and and we'll try and quickly summarize what we've done mm -mm. last time around. Uh, so first of all, Sego, please refresh our memory on what this problem was from a mm -mm. machine learning perspective. So uh, the idea, just to, to do a quick recap, uh, we are going to frame this recommendation system as a regression problem. So mm -hmm. quite simple way of doing uh, this uh, uh, recommendation system. Okay. We are going to use a data set and uh, the idea is to recommend some song to a, a user. Okay. So for you, heavy metal. Ah, <laughs> she remembers. I may remember, Thank of you. course. And of course, there is no heavy metal in the data set, <laughs> as you very well know if you watched. The previous episode, but I'm not going to complain. No, not this time. Well, I will, but <laughs> not, now. not too much. Okay. So we so in order to do some recommendations so system, we need to define uh, each track. So right. uh, each track has the number of features, mm -hmm. like energy, speechiness, uh, tempo, genre, genre, and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are going to do some preparation. We are going to aggregate feature and so right. on in order to see what kind of uh, what kind of music each user likes. And after, thanks to uh, Data Wrangler, we are going to concatenate the track feature with the aggregated feature of the author of the review. Mm -hmm. And finally, we will use the review rating as label, okay. and we try to predict it as a numerical value. So, okay. All right. Simple enough. So. Yeah. So the, the, the basic idea is um, for each individual user in the data set, we try to, we compute some aggregated stats to mm -hmm. figure out what they like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We call that user preferences. Mm -hmm. And these become features. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, and we, then we have all the song features, which you mentioned, and we join those two and now we have our data set. Exactly. Right? And we have the rating. So we know these user preferences with this song features uh, gave us this review. Mm -hmm. And we, we train on that and we predict it. Mm -hmm. So it's a regression problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. Super simple. So the data set is reasonably large. Yeah. If I remember well, it's what, uh, 140,000 different songs okay. for 250 users or something like that. Mm -hmm. So enough uh, to learn because we've got almost uh, 500,000 uh, user rating events. Okay. So okay. you can try to learn on this right. kind of data set. Yeah, exactly. So data prep, as we mentioned, we used uh, Data Wrangler yeah. uh, and we see the, the flow here. It's already included in the repo, so you can just run this flow either manually or run it with a SageMaker processing. Mm -hmm. um, we and... use as well SageMaker processing. Yes, yep, SageMaker processing to automate the, mm -hmm. the execution, but you can also run the, the flow manually if you want. Mm -hmm. So we have those notebooks 2A, 2B, 2C are actually the, um, the, 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 the notebooks for the, the different data sets uh, for uh, user preferences and tracks and, uh, and ratings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Is enough. So once we have the, um, the processed uh, data sets, mm -hmm. we push them to feature store. Exactly. Right? What yeah. happens next? Ah, oh, Athena? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, we are going to use um, Amazon Athena to uh, query the three features groups. Mm -hmm. So rating, tracks, and uh, user preference. And okay. after, thanks to Athena, uh, we are going to join the three data frames we built and uh, doing like some uh, drop, uh, duplicate uh, dropping uh, and, of course, splitting. Yeah, split. create the files, yeah. split them. But split them for okay. training and validation. Okay. Um, and then we train, as usual, no difference. No difference. Um, and we used uh, SageMaker Clarify. Um, yeah, SageMaker Clarify for explainability. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll look again at the Clarify a little bit today. And we use SageMaker Debugger to find problems that happen in the training job. Okay, so this is where we are. Exactly. Okay, so we trained a model. Uh, we ran some bias uh, analysis, explainability analysis. And now we'd like to deploy. Okay, so let's move on. Let me close those notebooks. We don't need them. And so we start from um, notebook number four. So once we have a model in SageMaker, once we've trained a model, we can use it in different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, We can deploy to a real-time endpoint, mm -hmm. and this is what we're going to do, Okay, uh, an HTTP endpoint, and we can send data to the endpoint to mm -hmm. be predicted. So that's what we're going to do today. There's another way, which is uh, called batch transform, where as the name implies, we run predictions in batch mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we put our data to be predicted in S3, and we run a batch job where um, the, the, the data will be predicted with mm -hmm. the model we trained, and we get results in, uh, in S3. Okay, we'll try to show you this in, in, a, in another episode. Okay, but for today, we're going to do um, real-time prediction. But it's important to have in mind real-time versus yes. batch. Yeah, and... and um, to expand on this just a little bit, uh, you know, some some use cases do not need real time prediction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to predict, I don't know, ten gigabytes of data once a week, once a exactly. month. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you know, you don't. The real time element is really just not useful at all, and uh, and so there's no reason to have an endpoint doing nothing or or even going through the trouble of creating the endpoint, taking down the endpoint. You can just run batch mode. Okay, for a lot of applications, actually, you know, batch is um, is completely fine, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's easier, it's super simple, so you can you can use that. Right? And on the opposite, on the opposite, if you need, for instance, if you are doing like some ML model on for uh, autonomous driving, yes, you need, you need real time. Any <laughs> any connected service yeah. needs real time, real right? Time, so exactly. if, if of course if the model needs to be accessible through. Uh, a web app, a, a mobile app, or yeah, an embedded device, then sure, uh, you need real time. But for a lot of business applications, you just Batch. want to predict. And I guess recommendation would be one of those where, yeah. you know, we want to predict um, new users every once in a while and mm -hmm. new data every once in a while. Um, maybe we don't need real time. Uh, it's up to you to, to figure it out. Okay, um, so let's uh, start looking at this. Okay, so 
first of all, we set up some, uh, we retrieve some parameters and we set up uh, some uh, technical parameters. Um, not nothing really significant here. Okay, uh, and here is where we really start. Okay, and I guess I can close this as well. Yes. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so here uh, what we're doing is um, we're deploying from a model that we trained in a different node. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in a lot of cases, we would actually have a single notebook where we go, you know, data prep, train, deploy. Okay, mm -hmm. and so um, the estimator object that we use uh, in the SageMaker SDK to create a training job is accessible all along. So we would go, you know, myestimator.fit and then myestimator.deploy, which is really the, the vanilla workflow for SageMaker. Here, um, we're doing it differently, okay? Because the estimator object was created in a different notebook. We don't have access to it. And mm -hmm. it's actually a good opportunity to show you how do I deploy a model that I trained last week, right? Mm -hmm. I have this model that I like. I want to deploy it again. So in this case, if you don't have access to that estimator, um, you create a model object, okay, just like that. And it's it's super simple. Uh, you you just pass the the name of the container that was used for training. So here we use XJBoost. So we just find the name of that uh, XJBoost container again, and we pass the location of the model artifact in S3. Okay. So um, a lot of people ask me, hey, how do I redeploy something? Uh, well, that's that's how. Okay, go and grab the model in S3, pass the container name, and that's it, okay? And so now we have this estimator object, and now we can call deploy, okay? So again, if you run all this stuff in a single notebook, uh, you would go at myestimator.fit to train and myestimator.deploy to deploy. Or if you want to redeploy a model, you would just do this, okay? Recreate, so to speak, the estimator from the model and call deploy, right? It's very simple, good, good trick. Okay, so the parameters here are friendly. Um, what's the instance type you want to use for mm -hmm. the endpoint? How many of those do you want? Uh, what's the name of the model and what's the name of the endpoint? Okay, so once again, managed infrastructure makes it very easy to, uh, to use this. Uh, you don't need to worry about setting up EC2 instances or networking or it just works. Okay. Um, so if we wanted, if we said, hey, let's deploy on, let's say, three instances, automatically uh, SageMaker would create those instances in different availability mm -hmm. zones. Mm -hmm. Load balancing is automatically applied. So, you know, no extra work. Okay. No extra work. So that's really super, super simple. So what happens next is, uh, SageMaker will uh, provision that uh, M4 Excel instance, create um, an API in front of it, create load balancing, et cetera, et cetera. And when the endpoint is in, is in service, what you actually have is a prediction API, right? And we can see it uh, if we go to the endpoints section. Here we go. Uh, music, yeah, we can look at this one. Describe endpoint. And if we go to AWS settings, okay, we see it here, right? Yeah. Okay, so an endpoint is a prediction API that you can invoke using HTTPS and mm -hmm. whatever invocation format the algo requires, okay? So in this case, it's the XGBoost format, which you would find in the SageMaker doc. If it was, a, let's say, TensorFlow, uh, a TensorFlow uh, endpoint, then we would use the TensorFlow serving format, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so nothing weird. Okay, it's just a managed prediction API running on managed infrastructure. Okay, so that's what we achieved. Um, now we want to predict. Okay, so given what I just said, it means we need to send an HTTPS request in the right format with the prediction data mm -hmm. to that endpoint. Cool. We could actually use any HTTPS library, 
right? So if you want to use, so in Python, we could use the, you know, I guess the requests library. Uh, we could use curl. Uh, we could mm. use Postman. We could use anything in all the other languages, and that would work. Okay. But here we'll just keep using um, the SageMaker SDK. So this actually returns uh, a predictor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could have here something like, you know, my predictor. Whoops. I can type equal blah, blah, blah. Oh, predictor. That doesn't exist. <laughs> it's predictor. Okay. Um, and then we could call my predictor dot predict okay but again um, this is a good opportunity to show you how to use an existing endpoint okay mm -hmm. so let's say you have a running endpoint somewhere mm -hmm. okay it's already been deployed uh, and you can and you want to reuse it and you want to use it now okay, okay? okay. Uh, again you don't have access to this uh workflow you just have access you know the endpoint name okay. you know it's out there in your account so you would just do this right you just like we created a model to access an existing training mm -hmm. job, we can create a predictor object to uh, access an existing endpoint. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just pass the name of it. Okay. And then we'll, as you will see, we'll just call predict on this predictor passing the data. Okay. So again, if you go from A to Z in your notebook, you would go estimator.fit, estimator.deploy, that returns a predictor, and then you would go predictor.predict. Okay. But, you know, in real life, different things exist at different times so <laughs> you may want to reuse a model you may want to reuse an endpoint right. and this is how you do it okay all right so the endpoint is running now how about we predict something so let's try and predict songs for a given user okay uh so let's take yeah user 11005 why not mm -hmm. uh, and you may remember that we used feature store Mm -hmm. uh, when we uh, run that example, okay? Uh, and so Feature Store has two elements, right? Mm -hmm. The offline store, mm -hmm. which is really S3, where we can query uh, using Athena, as you, as you explained earlier, to build data sets. Mm -hmm. And optionally, but we did create it here, we have an online store, online store. where we can retrieve features with very low latency from an online store, mm -hmm that is not totally unlike DynamoDB, right? <laughs> uh, and so the low latency element is important because at prediction time, we don't want to be running SQL queries. That's too slow for us. Even though Athena is very fast, we want, you know, millisecond latency mm -hmm. to inject and retrieve and inject data in prediction requests. And that's what we're doing here. So we're creating a feature store object. And as you can see here, this is the important API get record lets us retrieve features from uh, uh, one feature group uh -huh. for a given record okay okay so a feature group is just a collection of features that correspond to engineered features uh -huh. that we processed earlier and obviously here the record identifier is the user ID Okay. 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 Um, so it's really, you know, it's 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 really key value, uh, okay. a key, key value, value okay. yeah. key value API call. Okay. So for this user, we send me send me the record, and this is where we'll find the uh, the references. Okay, uh, and the features, the preferences. Sorry. And uh, and this is what we see for that user. Okay. And these are the uh, user preferences you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we computed for all the five-star reviews of each user, we computed the average values for all song features. Okay. okay. So these are the user features, user mm -hmm. preferences. Okay, good. And these are important because we want to predict for this person, mm -hmm. not someone else, right? Uh, and what do they like? <laughs> Tempos. Tempos. Uh, densibility, 0.27. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very mixed... Okay, so that person likes blues, rap, and reggae, and I won't make any comments. Blues is okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, it's not about my musical taste. Okay, so now we want to predict some songs, uh -huh. right? So we want to see if that user is going to like a bunch of songs. Okay, and, and this is generally how we do recommendation. You know, we, mm -hmm. we predict 
um, a whole bunch of songs mm -hmm. and then we keep the top 10 or mm -hmm. top 20. Mm -hmm. And this is what you see in your playlist, yeah. right? Okay, so here we're going to query. Uh, so this time we're querying the offline store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and he was using Athena. So very simple SQL query, just give me a thousand songs mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. at random from the, from the tracks table. So we run the query, okay? And so now we have a thousand rows with all the song features, okay? And here, obviously, you would not do this at prediction time, right? You would have this somewhere else, uh, but you would not run SQL queries, okay? So assume we have a list of thousand songs, uh, a thousand songs, and we want to predict that. So the prediction request needs to be actually a join of those two things, mm -hmm. because as you can see, we have a thousand rows in the prediction requests. So we have all the song features. So this particular song has a, a, an instrumental has value of 0.57, et cetera, et cetera. Tempo is 87, so on. And then we joined the user preferences. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're all the same across the rows because these are the values for our friend, uh, number 11 uh, oh, 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 right <laughs> <laughs> okay so these are the thousand rows we want to predict okay okay and of course we could have one right but why not have a thousand so we make sure they have the right format okay uh here we're using um uh we're using xtboost i think mm -hmm. and so um csv is a good format mm -hmm. it's one of the supported formats and that's what we apply here. So we basically convert those uh, val those rows into CSV values, right? Joining all the rows with commas, right? Using fancy Python. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have this prediction request, mm -hmm. right? So CSV, a thousand lines of CSV, and we call the predict API, which I already mentioned. Okay. okay. And we call this on the predictor. Okay. Okay. And it sends the prediction to the yep. endpoint. Okay. And so what happens now is we're really pushing an H. We are posting, I should say, we're posting uh, an HTTPS request to the URL that we saw here, right? Uh, in this uh, in this tab. Okay. Runtime. Okay. Okay. That's that's Perfect. what we're doing. Okay. So even though we, we're calling predict, it's really uh, you know it's uh, it's really HTTP posting to that. Okay, and again, if you don't want to use the SageMaker SDK, and that's totally fine, you can use any HTTPS library and post that data to that URL in CSV format, and it'll work, right? Okay, so the result is by default is a JSON answer. We could pass an accept type actually here that says text CSV if we want to CSV reply, but I guess JSON's fine. And what do you know? We're getting a thousand ratings okay exactly what we expected okay so values between zero and five or is it one and five i don't know i don't, I don't remember five. one and five okay and so we see a bunch of predictions so and this took you know just a few a few milliseconds mm -hmm. okay so sent an http request in endpoint got the answer that's okay. it so that's what you need to do if you want to uh, integrate endpoints into your app. So mm -hmm. let's say we invoke this from, you know, I don't know, a, a, a web app, a music service, something like that. You know, what we would do next is, of course, we would not display a thousand songs. So we'd probably display, I don't know, top 10, 10 top 10, 50, 10, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Find the top 50, um, top 50 uh, scores here, mm -hmm. using a bit of uh, pandas magic for sure. Mm -hmm. Match that to track IDs, um, which we know because we have we know where those songs came from and find the list, you know, the top 50 track IDs and then pass this to a web app that would go and, you know, find the, all the metadata for the songs, the, the genre, the, uh, the title, the, uh, the artist, etc. Right. And show this in your favorite music app. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So pretty simple, no drama. Um, okay. So I guess the bottom line here is uh, the, the vanilla workflow would be, you know, create your estimator, estimator.fit, estimator.deploy, re retrieve the predictor object returned by this, call predictor.deploy, 
predict or don't predict. Okay, here we saw how we can reuse a model, how we can reuse mm -hmm. an endpoint. Okay, cool. That's as much as you need to know for uh, real time endpoints. There are some more advanced configurations. Uh, I guess you know, we'll try and discuss those in, in future episodes where you can have. Um, different variants of the same model running on an endpoint mm. for A-B testing. A-B testing, yeah. Uh, we can do multi-model endpoints uh, for cost optimization, mm -hmm. and we can load and unload models on demand. So you could run a thousand models on the same endpoint, mm -hmm. not all at the same time, probably. No. <laughs> but if you want to run a single endpoint and pay for a single endpoint, and you can do that, load and unload dynamically. Uh, there are lots of configurations, but this is really the the main one here. Mm -mm, main steps. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I think that's it for. Did I forget anything? No, I, oh, think, I think we're it's, good. It's okay. Good. Okay. So let's move on. So in the previous episode, you rem you may remember we ran uh, bias analysis exactly. and explainability mm -hmm. uh, pre training. So mm -hmm. on the data set, uh, and um, we did this using SageMaker Clarify, right? Um, as it turns out. SageMaker Clarify can also can do the same on models. Okay. On post training. Post training. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I don't think we discussed it. And maybe if we did, then okay, we're gonna repeat ourselves, but that's okay. I think it's important to see this. Okay. It's very important. Yes, it is very important because um, the algo could have an impact, the tr and the training process mm -hmm. could have an impact on bias, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and may probably explainability, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it could it could make it better, it could make it worse, or it could do nothing. Exactly. <laughs> do nothing. <laughs> or a combination of those. Okay, so it's good to know if you have some potential bias uh, in in your data set. It's good to know what feature importance mm -hmm. uh, is in this data set. But you want to check this again after training. Okay, and uh, you could think, well, but you know, I've got my endpoint, so why don't I predict stuff with the endpoint, and then I'll see, right? Yeah. But so you could do that yourself. But it, in fact, the, the SageMaker Clarify service uh, lets you do that automatically. Mm -hmm. So we can run. Okay, again, go to the episode one for all the details. But if you add this model config uh, to your uh, Clarify config, job config, passing the model name, it's going to run the analysis, mm -hmm. not only on the data set, which we're asking for here, okay, uh, but also on the train model. Yeah. And in fact, it will deploy this model automatically for you. It creates a temporary endpoint, right, or a shadow endpoint mm -hmm. um, that is used only for the clarified job, and then it takes it down automatically, right? So, um, so you, you don't have to deploy a model to run uh, to run by a bias or an explainability analysis. Right? It's done automatically, okay. So once we run this job, then we have results. I mean, and we get here we have local shop values, and I mean we saw we saw all that stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and we run this explainability uh, explainability job, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so not spending too much time, but I just want to highlight this fact here. Okay, so if you, you can run uh, bias and explainability analysis on a model, you just don't need to deploy it yourself. Mm -hmm. It's already done for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a little uh, fact on. Uh, on bias analysis. Okay, um, so coming back, going back to our uh, to our endpoint. Okay, so now we have a live endpoint, mm -hmm. and we're predicting. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, and it's recommending music. Just not the music that I like, but it's okay. It's lots of you out there will be happy with the music. Um, lots of things could go wrong. Oh yes, <laughs> and these are the best because there are an opportunity to learn, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. What is model monitoring and why should I care? I think it's super important when, when you go from uh, research or like this kind of stuff during the data science aspect and after when you put into production a model, you want to know what's happened with real data and how your model reacts when you send in um, when you send it new data. And I think mm -hmm. this is the reason why uh, SageMaker Model Monitor uh, brings a lot of value to your pipeline because it's going to help you to uh, monitor what's happened uh, under the hood uh, once your model is um, live or using okay. real life data. Okay, so let me play devil's advocate for a second. So ah, we trained, <laughs> right? We 
we have a very nice data set. Mm -hmm. you know, we cleaned it. We 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 love that data, um, and 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 you know made really something good out of it. Um, we have a test set. We have you know we we we, we maybe we did you know uh, k fold validation. We use all these fancy techniques, and we have good metrics. So why would that model go wrong in production? You know what could be different in production? <laughs> <laughs> oh, always that. Always that. Always that. Always that. Okay. Because what you described is what's happened in a perfect, uh, perfect world. Mm -hmm. Everything is clean. Everything works well, and so on. But most of the time, when you put into production, and from, this is uh, the important part of the MLOps angle, is what's happened when you put real data in this beautiful, perfect world you created. Okay. So, so data could real life data. Could change. Could could change, right? Yeah. So it could be ugly, first of all. <laughs> could be could be messy, and it it is gonna. It, I shouldn't use could. It will be messy. Yes. So it's gonna miss features. It's gonna have mistyped features. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, scaling. Oh, scaling problems. Yeah, scaling I love problems. those. Oh, I have no. great <laughs> memories of uh, scaling mistakes <laughs> on on currency exchange rates. Half oh. me, I know. Uh, yeah, that was very messy. Okay, yeah. So you 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 find out later that some upstream app as is multiplying mm -hmm. your amount by a thousand because why not? Why not? And uh, and you know, <laughs> and it breaks a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So scaling issues and and just generally the fact that uh, data can change over time. Exactly. Right? I mean the 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 reality that your data your training data is model is describing. Could just change, right? Exactly. It's a dynamic. Uh, from a statistical perspective, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you have maybe the age distribution of your users is changing. Maybe the location of your user is is evolving as you're opening new markets, and those yeah, locations yeah. have different properties. So, okay, so you, the fact is, you don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know. But you want to monitor. <laughs> yeah. So the only the only option is okay. How do I keep an eye on exactly. prediction yeah. quality, mm -mm -mm. Um, and and how do I figure out that you know data drift uh, is happening and you know something is different and it could be even your bias yeah uh you know maybe bias is increasing your data set you mm -hmm. don't know right okay so that's what we that's why we need model monitor so model monitor can be applied on uh, at, at endpoint creation time mm -hmm. or it can be applied on an existing endpoint okay okay you can if you have a, a running endpoint you can update it to apply model monitoring. Okay, so let's take a look. So the first feature is, of course, as you explained, we need to understand that data, mm -hmm. the real life data, right? So we need to capture it. So the first step is enabling data capture on the endpoint. Okay, uh, so let's see how we do this. Uh, and as you can expect, capture data will be stored in S3, okay? And this is the data capture config object. So it's not very hard. Enable capture true. Okay, meaning, yes, please do this, okay? <laughs> it sounds silly because it's like, yeah, I'm creating the object, but keep in mind, you could use the object to disable capture, okay? Mm. So there you go. Okay. Uh, sampling percentage. So how much of that incoming data do you want to grab? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think the default value is 100%, okay, unless it changed in recent SDK versions. Um, so here, let's say, well, 25% is fine. Where do you want to store that stuff in S3? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to encrypt that data using uh, Amazon Key MS, mm -hmm. uh, Key Management Service? Do you want to capture requests and or responses mm -hmm. okay i think again by default we capture everything uh, what's the content type uh, that you want to use to store data uh, in csv format and what's the content type uh, for um, json okay so there's a bit of a caveat here right and this has bit me in the past so uh, you can only capture csv and json data and it's flat json Okay, so if you have nested JSON, it's not it's not gonna work. So data is actually gonna be captured, mm -hmm. but you'll run into issues later on. So if just if you just want to use capture the capture mechanism, it's actually okay, but for the monitoring uh, feature, it it won't work. Okay, so CSV only, flat JSON, 
And um, again, only one prediction uh, per request. Uh, sample per request. Okay, so the the example that we used earlier, where we sent a thousand lines, is actually going to break <laughs> uh, the monitoring feature. Okay, but let's pretend we did not do that. We did. Not. Okay, uh, so okay, if you if you follow that advice, CSV flat JSON one prediction. instance per prediction request, you are good to go. Okay, fine. Um, and next, okay, we apply the data capture config to the endpoint. Okay, and it's as simple as this. Okay, we again, we recreate that predictor object. Mm -hmm. Because remember, it's in another notebook, right? And we just call predictor.update data capture config, passing the config. It's a lot of data capture config, but it's really what we're doing. Here. <laughs> so it's all good. The name's good naming, right? And then we just wait for the endpoint <laughs> to be updated. <laughs> One thing to know is the endpoint actually stays up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if when you do endpoint updates, they are non-disruptive. Okay. Okay. So you can keep predicting. That's fine. Um, no, no downtime. Okay. Okay. So it runs for a few minutes, and now the endpoint is starting to capture data. Okay, mm -hmm. So if you go at the S3 location that you specified, you'll start seeing, uh, you'll start seeing files. Okay. Okay. And this is useful uh, in itself, right? Because mm -hmm. you could use that data to, you know, uh, to test your models, you know, for back testing or you know, any, it, it's already good to have that live data. You could add it to your training sets, whatever. Uh, so that's already nice. Now, the second step is baselining. So okay. baselining means I need to figure out the, the statistical properties mm -hmm. of my training data, mm -hmm. of my reference data, mm -hmm. so to speak, right? We assume your training set has been given a lot of love and it's perfect, okay? And you, you'd like to compare incoming data to that, okay? All right, so again, baseline results will be stored in S3 and creating a baselining job is not difficult. Here we're using the validation, validation set. set. Um, okay, and this is what we're doing here. Uh, so we're creating a baseline using the the data set, the validation data set, um, mentioning that this is a CSV data set and where to store results. Okay, so here's my golden data. Mm -hmm. Build a baseline from it. Okay. And compare real data. Yep. New data to this. And so this data. runs for uh, this runs for a few minutes, okay. And this will actually uh, we, we don't need to know too much about the processing job, but we do need to know about the results. Mm -hmm. So we can retrieve the baseline stats that SageMaker computed. So for all the columns in the data set, we see the inferred type. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see uh how many values are present mm -hmm. right so do we have missing values meaning would it be okay in my real life data to have some missing data mm -hmm. right if your some of your columns have a bit of missing data in the training set you know i guess it's fine if you have a bit of missing data mm -hmm. in your real life data right so how many are present how many are missing and then stats uh you know the mean mm -hmm. the sum uh, yeah. standard dev and uh yeah kll so i'm not gonna go we don't have time for that it's it's uh it's a great statistical tool to uh to describe data distributions exactly. okay KLL. kll sketches okay <laughs> your favorite one yeah yeah oh, it's it's very interesting but we don't have time for that so <laughs> go and look for kll sketches and and you'll you'll figure it out okay uh okay so we know uh, we know about those features, right? And again, this is what our real life data should look like. Mm -hmm. So now the, the next step is to enable monitoring. And um, this is done with a monitoring schedule. And a monitoring schedule is exactly what the name says. So it's gonna, now we have all the pieces that we need. We have the endpoint, mm -hmm. we have capture data. Yes. We have the baseline. Mm -hmm. And so every once in a while, okay. And in this case, we do it daily okay i think we can do it hourly as well if i remember 
um, we're going to look at uh, the statistical properties of the capture data and compare that to the statistical properties of the baseline data. And if something doesn't match, it becomes a violation and you have a violation report. <laughs> right. So you go, yeah, and in the morning you get that in your inbox maybe, if, if you configure that, uh, or you see it in a log somewhere and you spend a very interesting day figuring out, you know, who the hell sent me that crap data that's breaking my model, right? Which is what data scientists do anyway. Exactly. Right? <laughs> fix bad data before training, fix bad data yeah, after, after, after training. deployment, <laughs> and try to do some useful work in between. Yes? <laughs> Am I depressing you yet? No. Okay, so we create the monitoring schedule and, and then, you know, that's it. Okay? And so now every day mm -hmm. we're going to run those analysis. And if some crap data is sent to the endpoint, we'll have a violation report, mm -hmm. okay? And we can go and see, you know, okay, Why? that, that uh, item, uh, that um, uh, instance had this problem. And, you know, then of course you need to go and figure out what's wrong, right? Super useful. Thank yeah, you. super useful. And you see some metrics and, and you know, you can monitor, uh, you can monitor your metrics and you can monitor your, uh, um, you can monitor your uh, bias metrics and mm -hmm. all other metrics and over time see, you know, how well um, the model is doing or not, okay? All right, so I think we're almost done. Um, just show the last... Uh, yeah, we, so just a sneak preview. Sneak preview. <laughs> so the next step, now that we have everything, data prep, training, uh, bias analysis, uh, model deployment, model monitoring, model debugging, of course, the next step would be get rid of all those funky notebooks and do everything as a very sleek, nice, uh, and dare I say sexy <laughs> pipeline, okay? Um, and this is exactly what we're going to do in the next, next episode, episode, okay? So, ah, what a cliffhanger, okay? So <laughs> this is what we'll do. Uh, we'll walk through uh, an end-to-end -end pipeline where we create all those steps, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and just uh, link all of them and build a very cool pipeline that we can execute and visualize, etc. Okay. But that's for the next episode, right? Um, we're almost out of time, but we are on time, so that's good. Uh, so screen check time. Yes, let me. Yes, thank you, thank you, <laughs> saving me again. Okay, so this is the example we looked at uh, again today. Okay. A uh, very cool example with music rec. Okay, and so we completed the uh, the overall uh, the overall workflow. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we saw how to deploy, how to predict, how to use the online store, how to apply model monitoring, um, and so the next step is again automate all of that stuff. But mm -hmm. we'll show you this next week. Uh, another on another example, but we'll quickly show you what it looks like also for this example, right? Okay. Very cool. So I hope uh, I hope you learn a few things. And again, feel free to run these notebooks yourself. Uh, Sego, thank you so much. Thank you, Julian. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you next week with another episode completely dedicated to pipelines. Station see you pipelines. soon. Okay. Bye bye.